Canon announced further specifications for the EOS R5. They confirmed 8K video recording modes. They confirmed that 8K would have RAW. They confirmed which modes would provide uncropped video. Dual pixel autofocus is going to be available in 8K and 4K, and we get an update on in-body image stabilization. And instead of motion JPEG, as some have suggested, the R5 comes with a modern, efficient, and more detailed video codec that I said we'd probably be getting, and that's H.265. Stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss this update. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, I'm Simon, and this is The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, please click the like and subscribe button as it really helps my channel grow. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, I put them in the description down below. Wow, okay, I gotta catch my breath. I'm excited. This has just come out. Today we had an official Canon announcement. It was at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, Eastern Daylight Time. And I said this in a pre couple of previous videos. We were going to get an announcement on the C1, C300 Mark III. However, I did say while I didn't think we were going to get an R5 announcement, like the full specifications, I did state that I thought we might get some news, and news we certainly did. So I want to go over some of the key, um, uh, key capabilities that we're going to be getting in, in this release. And I've got my laptop here because I just, uh, there's a lot of information here. So we've got some really good detail on 8K. So 8K is going to have raw internal video. So 8K, Raw. That's right. Raw hasn't been removed. Now, I want to say a special thanks to Canon Rumors because I did pick this up of Canon Rumors. And if you remember back a month or two ago, there was some question as to whether we would get raw or not. So we, Canon has confirmed. This is from Canon's own information. And I'll put this up on the screen for you. 8K raw, internal video, internal recording up to 29.97 frames per second or 30 frames per second. We also get 8K internal video recording up to, well, so this 8K internal recording, not raw, so you have other options. It's going to be available in 10-bit 422. We're also going to get Canon C-Log. We get uh, HDR as well in 10-bit uh, 422. And the codec we're going to be using, as I mentioned in the preview, is H.265. And that only makes sense. Pretty well anybody who's releasing 4K in any form whatsoever to capture that content is going to be using H.265. There was also a Canon Australia announcement that came out about a month ago, and they said that all 8K video recording modes would be uncropped. And here's Canon's wordage on that. We're going to get full sensor readout for 8K. We're also going to get full sensor readout for 4K. So neither of those essentially are going to be cropped. Now, the sensor size and the aspect ratio of the video are slightly different, so technically there is a bit of a crop there. but. Forget that for a minute. Getting full sensor readout is what we're looking for, and that's what's going to give us the detail. That's what's going to give us lower noise. It's going to give us really good results. We're getting, hold on a minute, Let, let's just back up a minute. 422, 10-bit internal recording, RAW, C-Log, in 8K and 4K. That's incredible. Um, yeah, it, that, yeah, 8K, 4K, that's there. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I'm surprised by this. Um, also, uh, IBIS. So they talked a bit more about IBIS. It's going to be five-axis sensor-based stabilization, not digital. Now, there probably will be some sort of digital capabilities there. Now, Canon did state right at the end when they had this announcement, they said, these aren't all the specifications. We are going to be getting more specifications coming up shortly. Uh, what else here? i just making sure I didn't miss anything. Analog 4K internal recording mode, so yes. And that, that's the real biggest thing about this announcement here, which we have 4K and 8K video recording modes. Canon Log is going to be available. This makes the R5 a very, very powerful camera. In my view, this leapfrogs the competition. Um, nobody else is doing 8K. Nobody else is doing 8K uncropped. I know Sharp at CES was demonstrating a very early prototype of 8K in a, in a hybrid um, DSLR mirrorless type body. This is the first that I'm aware of anything hitting the market. This is the, by far uh, the best capable camera that Canon has out. A couple of days ago, I released a video on Canon DSLR and mirrorless cameras, and I looked at that roadmap, and based on what we knew then, based on the information coming out of Canon, the R5 and the R6 were really, 
they offer the best level of video capabilities and photo capabilities at pretty much around the best price up until the R5. 4K60 was as good as it got, and we got that with the 1DX Mark II and the 1DX Mark III. Now, the 1DX Mark III also provides H.265, which is great. You can save some money, as one of my users pointed out, spending $3,200 on the Mark II, but then you're getting that motion JPEG. So this R5, it's a smaller body, fits in your hand better. Now, it is a mirrorless, but that doesn't mean we're going to get poor battery life. The battery in this camera is the same size and dimensions as what goes in the 5D Mark IV. Now, what, what will that mean in terms of how many shots? Don't know. We, we don't know how many milliamps it's going to require. We don't know what the draw on it is. For video shooters, you're not going to really see much of a difference. This isn't going to be bad. This isn't going to be, you're only going to get 45 minutes of record time. I think we're going to get some good numbers. We're going to get a lot of good shots off of this, but it won't approach uh, what a DSLR has because they use more power. That EVF draws more power. So that's, that's some really good news. Now, I didn't get any information in this. Canon didn't say anything about recording limits, so I have no idea. And that's the one thing that people keep uh, bringing up. What's this thing going to be? Is it going to be five minutes, four minutes? We don't know. 20 minutes? We don't know. What about 4K? Don't know. And 1080? Again, we don't know. Now, I believe... Let me just take a look here, because I think we get... Let me just go back up here. Um, yep, uh, so, <laughs> so I almost missed this. In 4K, we get confirmed as 120 frames per second, or 119.88. Again, in 10-bit 422, uh, with C-Log if you want it, it's H.265. So even slow motion in 4K is top shelf. These are really good. This is a very, very powerful camera. I wish I knew a bit more about 1080. They didn't give us a lot of information about 1080. Let me just see if I can find any more information here. Uh, no, there's, there's nothing about 1080. I don't remember. I'm a little bit excited. This was, I didn't expect this news to come out in this level of detail. So I'm a little bit unprepared. Uh, optical image station, quick, yeah. Yeah. So nothing. Oh, um, card slots. So again, we have confirmation of dual card slots. We're going to get one. Just one, one CF Express card slot and one UHS-2 card slot. Now, there's been some discussion as to whether UHS can handle 8K. Keep in mind, the speed of the maximum speed that you can get in a card, sustained write, is around 250 megabytes a second. So you multiply that by 8 to get megabits, which is generally what is considered... Uh, data in transit is measured in bits, data at rest is in bytes. So that brings it up to... It could more than it could handle 8K depending on what codec you used. So it's going to have dual card slots, uh, and, and that was really it. Now I was intending to do a video on the C300 Mark III, but I'm going to do that in a separate video. This is all about the R5, and I'd like to sort of step back a little bit. Uh, just I think it was January the 28th when I first broke the story on the R5, saying it would have 8K RAW. And I heard a lot of comments from a lot of you guys that are very experienced, very smart. They've been using Canon for many years. And the idea of 8K RAW, IBIS, uh, uncropped, was just a ridiculous thought. There's no way Canon's going to do this. They're not going to cannibalize the cinema line. They're not going to provide leapfrog the competition. And, and don't get me wrong here. I, I don't think that this is going to cannibalize the cinema line one way whatsoever. They're completely different cameras. Yes, it's going to provide us with really good results. But if you're looking at things such as Dynamic range, the C300 Mark III, some of the things that Canon talked about, is in excess of 15 or 16 stops of dynamic range. Low, night, low noise performance is incredible. You can be outside at 9600 ISO, even 10,000 ISO, um, with just street lights uh, lighting up the scene, and you've got more than enough light to, shine, to, to film a show, to film a movie. Whereas uh, the hybrid, the, the R5, isn't going to compete. Uh, also, these cinema line cameras are designed to run 8 hours a day all day long, or 12 hours a day, as the case may be. They're designed to be rugged. They can be, well, I wouldn't suggest tossing them around, but they can take bumps. They can take scratches. Um, they're, they're just designed at a whole new level, but that doesn't diminish the R5 in any way whatsoever. This camera is going to bring back people from Sony that left Canada. It's going to bring back people that left to go to Panasonic or any other brands. This is a really significant camera. Canon is also doing a jo good job of stealing the news. Now, initially, 
um, Sony was going to have their press release at 12 o'clock today, and then Canada announced theirs, and at some time between then and now, Sony has gone ahead and rescheduled theirs to April the 30th at, I believe, 9 o'clock Pacific time. Canon is stealing the news cycles here. This is the third release of information on the R5 that Canon has dropped, and every single time people like me report on it, news sites report on it, the media reports on it, so general media, you, this information is everywhere, and Canon's just stealing the news cycles. And even people that generally will focus on Nikon or others are taking notice of this because this is rather significant. This is a huge technology jump, a technology leap forward, and it's very, very impressive. So tell me what you guys think. Uh, does this further solidify that you want to get the R5? Me personally, it's going to be based on price. Unfortunately, uh, because the Canadian dollar has lost so much in the last year or so, I'm paying about a 35% premium. So whatever you see in US dollars, I have to pay an extra 35% on top of that. And that's going to be a little rough. Uh, I think I'm probably going to end up getting the R6, but I look at these, these stats, uh, 4K 120, it's really nice to have. In terms of having a camera that's going to last me five, six, seven, eight, even up to 10 years, I'm not going to outgrow 4K 120. Uh, it's just astonishing. And don't forget, this camera also has 12 frames per second mechanical, 20 frames per second electronic. Now, I don't think this is going to replace the 1DX Mark III in any way. The 1DX Mark III can handle, what, up to 1,000 shots a second raw, um, does 10-bit HEAF, and I believe that the R5 and R6 are going to do 10-bit HEAF as well as JPEG and raw. But in terms of high-speed sports photography, well, don't forget, you need a really fast data, data transfer rate, and you've, the storage here can handle it. Uh, CF Express can handle that. Um, what can the sensor handle? Well, if we can do 8K, then obviously you can process, um, you know, at least 995 million pixels per second. But what's the buffer size going to be like? And so that'll really determine. And of course, this is mirrorless. So how's that, um, I was going to say optical viewfinder. So how's that electronic viewfinder going to hold up? Is there going to be a lag? Because as sports photographers, um, fast action sports photographers, most of them do not like the EVF because there's a bit of a lag. They, they don't like seeing... I know it's, it's nice because EVFs can take into account the, your, your balance, your, your exposure, ISO, and all that stuff. So what you're seeing through the viewfinder is pretty close to what you'll actually get. Now, it might be you will have to overcompensate a little bit for some of the brightness because it tends to appear a bit more bright. But a lot of people who've been shooting fast action sports photography for many years, they just love being able to look through the viewfinder and see the world the way it actually is and then make changes and adjustments later. So I don't think it's going to compete. Um, I believe there's going to be an R1 coming out. And as I said in a previous video, I think um, with the data pathways, um, there is a theoretical limit at which the 1DX can actually process images. And if we look at that same data rate, 995 million pixels per second, well, that's one image at, nine, at 995 megapixels. Or if we dropped it down to the 20.1 megapixels that the 1DX Mark III is, or 20.2, I believe it is, that would allow us to have roughly 49, that's it, 49 frames per second at 20 megapixels. So that's rather huge. You could have the R1 capable of a much faster frame rate without sacrificing quality. Now, autofocus might be a bit of an issue at that point, but the R1 will be a much more capable camera. For the ordinary average filmmaker, the R5 is really stretching the budget, but if you were to buy this camera, if you could save for it and be able to afford it, like I started a YouTube channel to help be able to afford some of these things, then you'd probably have a camera that'll last you a long, long time. And I think that for the ordinary average filmmaker, these frame rates are more than fast enough for you to catch, capture fast action, whether it be uh, stuff like water skiing, whether it be car racing, horse racing, whatever the need be. But that's it for today. Um, tell me what you guys think. Are you, are you as excited as I am? Hopefully, I don't appear as excited as I did with the first R5 announcement. But let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.